it works. I want to make sure I get us locked in there. So now we're live. And I also, as I stated, I have a special guest with me for the first couple of minutes of our program. And the incredible, incredible Dr. Flunzy Brown Wright, who's uh, joining us tonight to talk to about an annual program that's always fantabulous. And again, she did not let COVID uh, deter her. She said, we're going forth and we're going to get on the platforms that's being used uh, for the past year. So welcome to the show again, Dr. Wright. Thank you so much, uh, President Jones. And look, um, it's, it's, it's so exciting. You're always a, have been uh, on our program on and on and a charter member of, of Women for Progress. How are you doing and what have been some of the outstanding things during COVID uh, that you have learned or been engaged in? How have you used this as an opportunity to continue to grow and thrive? Well, thank you so much for the opportunity to share this, uh, these few minutes with you. Um, my mom taught me that there's always more than one way to quote skin a cat. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a mo- that's a mother quote. Yeah. And um, in that we cannot assemble in person, then of course virtual and technology has allowed us to still present our back in the day annual Black History celebration at New Hope Baptist Church. And this year our theme is music, a universal language, transcending all socio economic and cultural barriers and of course uh, our church is pastored by dr jerry young and uh, <clears throat> we're just excited that this year we thought we would use music to kind of encourage our people because we know that even our ancestors when they were in turbulent times they used the moans the groans the hymns the anthems the little songs to encourage them so we have some just dynamic guests this year we only have two nights this year instead of four. And our first night will be on February the 11th at 6 p.m. virtually. And our guest is the Grammy award-winning Doug Williams. Mm. He will kick off that first night. And, of course, also the opera singer, Mrs. Deanna Tisdale Johnson, is going to sing America the Beautiful. Wow. And we, just, we have a great evening lined up that day, that evening. And we're also honoring as opposed to four, two Mississippi civil rights veterans. And of course, Dr. Truly, hello, my friend. We are honoring um, Judge Mamie Chen, the first uh, circuit court judge who served uh, 34, 35 years on the bench there in Canton, which is also my hometown. And we're also honoring a retired professor, uh, John Garner, from Tougaloo College, who is also a, a, a Madison Countyan at the time. So that's our first night. And then our second night, which is our grand finale, we are really going to have a great musical with the New Hope uh, Mass Choir, the Taylor Sisters um, under the direction of Dr. Dow Taylor, the Watson family under the direction of Mr. Randolph Watson, and then finally the Curry family. And we know that any any of you know anything about music in the Jackson area, area, you know those are some singing, not singing, (laughs) those are some singing brothers and sisters. And so we're just happy that uh, the first night will be February the 11th at 6 p.m. The second night, the grand finale, will be February the 25th at 6 p.m. And you can hit us up on uh, the New Hope, our New Hope uh, Church's um, Facebook and YouTube pages. Mm-hmm. So we're just excited that, uh, no, we're, we're not going to let COVID stop us because people still need to be encouraged more so in 2021 than probably in, in a long time. Right. And, and I love the way you always make uh, our black history relevant to the times that we're in. And you bring in mu- music to refresh our soul, to refresh us mentally, and also to give us hope uh, for the, the rest of this year to do what we know we need to do to continue to empower ourselves. So this is the New Hope Baptist Church Facebook page and also YouTube page. And you can Google those and we'll continue over the next few weeks also to continue to share those particular links so folks can go ahead and and mark their calendars. But this is just amazing. I mean, every year we think that that, uh, you can't do more than you did the year before and you just keep surprising us and inspiring us. So this is extremely relevant. You have pulled together a group of singers and inspiration folk 
that's going to just really, really get us tapping our feet. And 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 uh, and so many of us, since we're doing it from home, probably a lot of us dancing around our our rooms and uh, and where we are. So that's what's incredible about this, Doctor Wright. This is just really amazing that you have pulled this together. And how many years, uh, uh, Doctor Wright, have you been doing this back in the day program? But well, this this is our tenth year anniversary wow. celebration wow and i and i might add that there's a great committee of people uh that's uh that's been assigned to work with me mm-hmm. and they just do all kinds of things we have an attorney and it tech we have all kinds of different people who bring uh their talent to, to the table as well and uh it takes us a year it takes us one year mm. to plan this program so when the finale is over on the 25th we'll have we, we have a debriefing meeting and then we start planning in March and April what's going to happen for the next year. So we just don't wait until you know September, October. We're meeting in the month after our program is over. So um, it does take about a year to plan it and six weeks to execute it. Mm. So by the time we start rolling um, in December, we are rolling until our first program airs. Well, I can tell it takes a lot of planning and time because of the quality of the program that you all always put on, and uh, and, it's, and and people from near and far always have amazing things to say. So I'm going to remind folks that this is uh, this is for the month of February, the back in the day, uh, a virtual Black History celebration. This is the tenth annual event, uh, New Hope Baptist Church under the pastor of Dr. Jerry Young. Uh, and it's called Music, a Universal Language. How appropriate, a universal language, because we're talking about now about unity and about uh, race and how we can all work together. So how appropriate to have this particular celebration and this particular theme. Thursday, February 11th at 6 p.m., uh, Doug Williams, Deanna Tisdale Johnson, celebrating uh, uh, civil rights legend Judge Mamie Chen, Professor John Garner. And Thursday, February 25th, at the same time at 6 p.m., the Curry family, the Taylor sisters, the Watson family, and the incredible New Hope Mass Choir, all a part of this amazing event. So thank you so much, Dr. Wright, for coming on and sharing it with us. We'll continue to share it out. And I'll also put some links in our comment section so people will find, uh, be able to connect with it also. We look forward to this event, and uh, I'm going to stay tuned in and put my patent shoes on. And, uh, oh, yeah. And, the uh, shower shoes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And look. And get my my uh, fan ready because I know I'm gonna get warm and and hot and uh, we'll get there, ready. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All you need now is a hat and some gloves. That's right. That's <laughs> right. That's the time for us to get dressed up, right? Hey, hat yeah. and gloves. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for sharing thank this you. tonight, and uh, and I look forward to talking to you again real soon. Okay. Thank you so much. I do appreciate your time, and again, Doctor Truly. Is my what was my doctor when I lived in Canton, and certainly is my is my mayor uh, uh, as well. So yeah, how appropriate <laughs> to have have uh, have you on tonight too. Thank you so right. much. Thank you so much. Have a good one. All right, bye bye. Okay, Mayor, uh, we just finished talking to uh, one of your uh, former citizens, uh, Dr. Flunzy Brown Wright. She had wonderful things to say about you and she says that you were even her used to be her former doctor when she lived there well that's that's absolutely correct and uh we uh appreciate all the glorious and good contributions that uh dr wright has made uh out to the community of madison county as well as mississippi yeah well i'm so excited to have you here again um you know when i think about you uh dr truly I think about all the particular areas of the work of not only Women for Progress, but the Lady Drivers Golf Club. I can remember having golf tournaments there in Canton and how so many, many many years you supported us and uplifted us and always came when we called. It was always a yes, yes. And uh, I will not forget that. We thank you so much for, for your support of this organization and support of women in general. Well, you certainly appreciate it. I recall when the uh, 
Women for Progress was just getting started. Matter of fact, I think the, uh, I used to be a, a member of Women for Progress. I don't know what happened to my membership, <laughs> all the guys. <laughs> well, we're going to have to get you back group. on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Peter Stewart and, and all of us, we were, we, we were members. Yeah. But for, look, first of all, I, I want to thank you for inviting me uh, this afternoon. There's a lot of information that can be shared and will be shared with uh, the listening audience, information that all of us uh, actually need. Uh, this is really a serious illness, not only uh, in the United States and the state of Mississippi, it's a critically serious illness uh, globally. Uh, When you think about the fact that, and it's just in the state of Mississippi alone, uh, we now have 272,000 cases. Mm -hmm. And of course, that's a lot of cases. And so, and then you think about uh, the number of cases that have impacted white Mississippians, which is 101, the number of cases that have impacted uh, African Americans, which is uh, seventy-two thousand, and then as you look at our state, particularly there in Hines County, in which you have eighteen thousand cases, in DeSoto County you have seventeen thousand cases, in Harrison County fourteen thousand cases, in Rankin County you have eleven thousand cases, then of course in Jackson County eleven thousand cases. So this is really a serious illness, and the question that we have to ask ourselves, which is the same thing we asked uh, Marvin Gaye, what's going on? Mm. And some people always often say, you know, that's an answer uh, that we need. And th- there are a lot of things that we can do to stop the transmission of this virus, which is basically simple, uh, Ms. Woods. If you would just wash your hands, if you would just uh, wear a mask, and of course, if you would just simply stay a distance. I'm reminded of the time when there was a practice choir and there were 60 people in the choir. And of the 60 people in the choir, 40 came down, 45 uh, came down with COVID-19. Uh, and the reason for that is because people don't recognize and realize that when we sing and when we talk and when we communicate, the virus is expelled and the gases that we expel, mm. we take in oxygen, which is great. We give out carbon dioxide. And when carbon dioxide uh, emanates from our body, through our mouth, or through our nostrils, uh, those viruses are encapsulated in those gases. And they can certainly infect people uh, who are close to you. And so we just have to be extremely careful and, and hope that with the vaccines that we have now uh, from Pfizer, from uh, uh, Moderna, and of course, those are two shot dosages. And of course, AstraZeneca has one that's, that's been administered mostly in Europe and everybody's waiting for the Johnson vaccine. But uh, this disease is, is devastating also in the African-American community. I was looking at some figures uh, just the other day that I found to be fascinating uh, in which you had just about 22,000 African-Americans here in Mississippi who had received the vaccine and 99,000 white Mississippians. Mm. And so I had to ask myself the question, what's going on here? What's happening is that the vaccine is distributed at the traditional institutions like hospitals and public health are distributed at health centers, are distributed at uh, physicians' offices, distributed at CVS and uh, Walgreens. I need to share with you that that's fine because a lot of people are being vaccinated today, uh, but we we, we, we ought to have to come up with some other kind of an idea as to where our folks are Mm -hmm. and where we can become vaccinated because a lot of African Americans are not getting online and since we're not getting online with the health department then we're not getting in line Mm -hmm. and having an opportunity to be uh to be vaccine i mean to be vaccinated so i've always advocated that we need to have a vaccination sites at churches Mm -hmm. everybody in the community goes to church Mm -hmm. and so 
you know, I, I, I submitted a letter to uh, the governor uh, through, and then I am also asking Congressman Thompson to take a look at that. Of course, he's only one person. I sent him an email asking to consider that we start doing vaccinations at churches. And that's a good way to reach rural America. It's a good way to reach African-Americans uh, as well. But there are those uh, here in the state of Mississippi uh, who believes that this virus is not for them, uh, who are defiant, uh, who decide they don't want to wear a mask. And not recognizing and realizing if you don't wear a mask and you don't care about your life, then you ought to care about the individual's life who is around you, mm -hmm. uh, who, can, who can contact and contract <clears throat> the disease. You ought to care about the life of your family members, of the life of your loved ones. And there's a false notion and a false theory that uh, my constitutional rights have been compromised and I'm being denied and deprived of my constitutional rights. But I tell you, Ms. Wood, there's nothing in the constitution that allows anyone to infect another person with a virus. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's exactly what's happening. Look. I'm gonna I'm gonna slow down and hold down because I haven't given you a chance. Well, no, no, you you're giving us just the information we're gonna need, and I want to just speak to that too. I was on I was listening to a CNN uh, interview the other day, and the expert that was on said that they were talking about why we're having so many ha having difficult getting people to uh, be more responsive, and the the expert said. He believes that the big problem is not that people don't believe that COVID exists. They don't believe that they can get the COVID. And, and so that's a selfish thing that, you, that we're talking about is a lot of times we think about COVID and we think about what COVID might do to us or our belief that rather, you know, we're doing all things, we're washing our hands and we're masking up and all this stuff and, and you feel like you're not concerned. But as you stated, you think about the people around you. And I think that's still a big, big issue with us. But I love the idea that you talked about getting vaccinated at the churches. I think I've been, I personally, I'm, I'm pretty internet savvy and, and uh, I like devices and stuff. And I still have not been able to get an appointment. I've been going online. Sometimes I go at, I get online at midnight. Sometimes I do it early in the morning. Sometimes I do it at lunchtime. I still haven't been able to get in line yet. So think about all of those elderly individuals. All of these other folks who may not have access to internet or just don't feel comfortable going to these particular websites. That's a lot of folks. And, well, that's uh, a lot of folks, yeah. quite a bit. And one of the things that I'm discovering is that, uh, it, it, you know, we, we, we're on the list with the Mississippi Department of Health. And, of course, everyone calls us because we're on that list with about uh, 30 other health care facilities the problem that we're having is that we simply don't have enough vaccine to vaccinate the people who are registered uh, to be vaccinated at our clinic. And what happens is that the health department will send 10 vials at a time and, and, and 10, vial, 10 vials will service only 100 folks. Mm. And I'm discovering that, this, that African Americans, at least in, in my community and where my wife and I practice, uh, are really... Uh, knocking the door down, trying to get vaccinated. Mm. And I've, I've, I've heard all of these theories about mistrust and distrust. And of course, that's true. The syphilitic uh, Tuskegee report and, uh, and not trusting the government. Uh, but I'm discovering that, that uh, uh, African Americans want to be vaccinated and want to be uh, protected. The problem is uh, we just can't get online. Mm hmm You know, we just can't get online. And oh, that, that system, can I go on that one? And while we're getting uh, the doctor back on, um, I want to just let folks that are listening in to know that you've been listening to the Women for Progress radio show. And tonight, our guest is the Honorable Mayor uh, William Truly, uh, MD, um, 
from Canton, Mississippi. He's the mayor of Canton. And, uh, and we were having a conversation with him tonight about um, not only the COVID-19, but also what's going on in his community. And, um, and, we're, in the, uh, we're talking a lot about a lot of different talk topics uh, that's happening around the Canton area. So thank you all so much for tuning in with us. While we wait till he gets, gets back on, I want to share a few updates with you. want to let you know that Women for Progress, in partnership with uh, uh, Jackson Free Press, the Jackson Advocate Newspaper, the League of Women Voters, Mississippi Black Women Roundtable, and the Mississippi NAACP, will be hosting a City of Jackson mayoral forum on March 4th, 2021 at 6 p.m. That's March 4th, uh, 2021 at 6 p.m. So mark your calendars. It's going to be a powerful, powerful, engaged event. The event will be a, both a combination, a hybrid of uh, uh, virtual and in-person. Uh, and we'll have more details ready for you real soon uh, after the deadline mm -hmm. Uh, for which is going to be uh, the deadline is uh, February 5th for um, uh, for people to, to sign up and engage. Uh, welcome back, I'm Dr. Back. Truly. I'm going to wrap up this announcement. And I'll be right back with you. So so I want you all to mark your calendars for March 4th at 6 p.m. for the uh, City of Jackson Mayoral Forum and Women for Progress in partnership with Jackson Free Press, Jackson Advocate, Legal Women Voters, Mississippi Black Women's Roundtable, and the Mississippi NAACP is hosting that event. And we're so excited about that. And, uh, and so stay tuned and stay engaged for more details, but mark your calendars. This is an important year for municipal elections. So we want you to stay tuned in. Women for Progress will be doing our best to continue to get, keep you engaged and informed on the issues and, uh, and all of the information. So uh, make sure you stay tuned with us. Welcome back, Dr. Truly. Why, thank you. We hit a, a dead zone somewhere. Yeah. Uh, look, uh, Ms. Woods, there's a, there's a young lady here with me who is actually the heartthrob uh, and, and the heartbeat of my clinic. Uh, uh, Truly Healthcare Systems there in uh, Canton. And she is the one who manages uh, all of our COVID patients. So I just want her to say a few words. Okay, great. Hi, good afternoon. Hello. I'm sorry, I am the driver and <laughs> you're navigating the um, the camera here for me. Okay. Uh, yes, we do have a we have a clinic. Our clinic is in Canton, Mississippi. It's Truly Family Healthcare Clinic, and we are trying to get as many. Um, vaccines into the arms of, uh, of individuals. Uh, there is a, a difficulty for our elderly to get online to try to just schedule an appointment through the health department system. Uh, but on, um, on the Mississippi um, health department website, they do have a printout where they can, someone can print out the clinics that are providing the, um, um, the COVID-19 uh, vaccinations, and uh, we can take that and share that also with our um, with our citizens and individuals. Okay. Um, that's all. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. All. She, she, she's a little shy, but uh, look, I want to mention a couple of things. One, mm -hmm. at, at COVID as it relates to children, and people have a tendency to think that uh, our children are immune to this disease. The point of the matter is that. Here in the state of Mississippi, between the ages of 11 and 17, uh, we have 19,000 children uh, who have been impacted by COVID. Uh, as it relates to young people, there are 58,000 people in the state of Mississippi between the ages of 26 and 39 uh, who have been Im impacted by COVID. So this disease uh, crosses and impacts the young, the middle aged. Uh, uh, the elderly, uh, those folks who are in the nursing home, and which is about 10,000 in the state of Mississippi, in which we've had about elite, uh, 800 uh, deaths, 800, um, 1,800 deaths. And so it's, it's, a, it's, it's a devastating disease. And the problem that we're having right now, and people talk about the new strands that are coming out of us, 
coming out of uh, uh, Brazil, coming out of South Africa and the UK. Uh, we know that that is highly contagious, it's quite transmissible. We seem to think that the vaccines that we have now will indeed be uh, protective. But you remember the Spanish flu of uh, 1918? Mm -hmm. And neither one of us was born then. During that time, we had 675,000 deaths, uh, 50 million cases worldwide. What was the treatment? The treatment was wash your hands, wash your hands, wear a mask, and stay a safe distance. Mm. Give me a signal when you're giving out of time. <laughs> no, no, stuff. no. And, and, and Dr. Truly, I want to make a little pivot here. Uh, it's to keep keeping our topic, but but move a little uh, a different area. You know, this entire year has impacted communities and cities all over this country, and so yeah. we've been talking about the impact to us physically and medically. But how has Canton held up to the other challenges around COVID, workforce development, and and education in, in the schools and those types of things. How have you, uh, how, how are your citizens of Canton handling and manage those many challenges? Well, we've done several things in Canton. First of all, I've had several con conversations with the superintendent, Mr. Gary Hanna, and advised him up to this point that we need to go virtual. Uh, I felt that the closeness created transmissibility uh, for the virus. Uh, we have done several uh, town hall meetings educating the public at large about the seriousness and the danger and the transmissibility of this virus. The ministers have been extremely cooperative and have gone from uh, 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 services in church to uh, virtual services, have gone to grave uh, graveyard uh, burials. Uh, people recognize and realize that Again, this is dangerous. We have issued several proclamations. We have issued curfews. We also have the no mask, no entry uh, proclamation. And the, the point of the matter is that we, we, we have interjected all of that. I think our salvation at the end of the day uh, is going to be the vaccine, is going to be uh, washing your hands, wearing masks, and safe distance. There are other things that can be done when you at the service station trying to put gas in your car. Make sure you, you, you wear gloves. If you don't wear gloves, then at least wash your hands with a sanitizer that contains a minimum of at least 70% uh, alcohol. I have to take my shoes off when I go in my house and not allowed. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, so, uh, and other things. And so... And my wife is a nurse practitioner, and she has some pretty strict rules and regulations. And so because I'm a physician, I've been there for so many years now, and also the mayor. Uh, usually people have a tendency to trust me, to believe in me. And so when I share this information with them, uh, it just helps the entire community. Right. And, and you know, Madison County is like number seven. And, uh, you know, we, we, we've had our 7,000 cases, uh, so, but uh, uh, we're trying to do whatever we can to, to, to mitigate this case, this, this disease, and keep it from, from transmitting. And, and, and uh, Mayor Truly, I want to talk a little bit about also your, uh, your, your connection with Canton. Uh, over the past years, you're serving your is that second term now for, as the mayor of the of the Canton. <laughs> uh, yeah, people uh, say that I'm looking for a second. Yeah, this is my second term. I started out in well, I really started out uh, being involved in Canton as early as 1972. So I'm going to ask you, don't start counting. <laughs> That's a lot of years. And uh, my first time running for mayor was 1978, 79. Wow. Don't start counting. Uh. That's a lot of years. And so I've been in every phase of politics that has occurred in, in Canton in 1997 when I became the vice mayor up until 2005. And so here I am again as the mayor, then serving as mayor from 2009 to 2013. A plug for Canton. As you know, we got the big Amazon plant there. Yeah. And uh, what I'm doing is basically trying to to make sure that uh, the Cantonians are hired. 
mm-hmm. and to make sure that not just as laborers but as as folks who have skill sets mm-hmm. and so and we'll we have other major industries that are coming so we're beginning to grow I think we're going to be okay. Well, I, I, re- I read something that I found on the internet that you had quoted. And I think this is a very old quote of you. So, so, so don't shake in your boots yet. But it says here, all of my life I have fought for the rights and fair treatment of all people, regardless of race, religion, or national origin. I think fighting against injustice and particularly racial injustice has been my greatest contribution. And and I think that's what when when I mention your name, that's that quote is what people speak to, is uh, is your your a passion to help all people and to make sure that everybody is treated fairly. Would you say so? I would say so. And my philosophy is, we have to stop perpetuating injustices. Uh, we have to stop man's inhumanity to man. Uh, whether the whether you stop that. Uh, injustice perpetrated against uh, any ethnic group, black, white, uh, Jewish, uh, green, uh, Latino, and uh, Native American. Uh, I, I don't believe in, 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 in man's inhumanity in, of man. I don't believe in the perpetuation of injustice and atrocities and, and, and bigotry and biases perpetrated by one person upon another just because of the ethnicity, the color of their skin, their gender, or their difference. Mm-hmm. Uh, in my philosophy is that that's just not right. Uh, God created all of us in his image, and, uh, and we're all God's children. And, and, and we need to learn how to live on this earth. It's just a ball that is spinning in space. Mm-hmm. And, and I think you, uh, particularly as mayor of the city of Canton, is a man of the times because the city of Canton is over 175 years old. It's gone That's through correct. a lot of challenges and a lot of racial issues. And uh, so when you speak to that, uh, when you say you want fair treatment for all people, it's the type of mayor that the city of Canton is lo- is in need of in these particular times. Would you say that also? I would, I would say so. Uh... You know that that we we have to move forward as one and not divided, uh, but as one. And there's there's room in this world, and there's room on this bridge, and room along this journey uh, for everybody. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I think, as they said in the military, out on the field of war, no soldier should be left behind. I think no man, no woman, no child uh, should be left behind as we try to do what is in the best interest of mankind for us, by us, and all of us. Mm -hmm. And even though the city of Canton is only 15,000, I think roughly 15,000 residents, it has a lot of great access. Uh, What what are you most proud of within the city of Jackson, the the many things that it has to offer? Well, you know, I'm mostly proud of the fact that we believe in ourselves, mm-hmm. and 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 of course we believe uh, in each other. It's a small town. Uh, it's a uh, what you call a mom and pop place. Mm-hmm. Uh, it didn't change like Madison. It didn't change like uh, uh, Ridgeland. One of the things that we're working on now is to make sure that Kansas become a destination place, uh, so that when you're going up and down 55, you'll be able to say, "Oh, I want to stop uh, in Kansas." Uh, my my contribution to the city of Canton has basically been one of message, communication, and, and, and education, voter registration, and, and, uh, and causing people to believe that this is not all that there is, that there is more, you can do more, and you can become more, and that we must become more. So my message to, to Cantonians has always been, let's keep moving forward. Uh, disrobe ourselves of the negative negativity. Uh, let's believe in ourselves, and we can we can accomplish this task and this goal together. Yes, yes. And I, I for many many years, I was a member of the golf course there, and I played, and I always enjoyed Canton. It was always wonderful food. The people were always extremely extremely nice. And um, and when my husband taught me the history of Canton. Um, I, I was even more in, endowed to it. It was just um, 
it has such a rich history, and it, and it's important to the for this to the state of Mississippi, sitting right in central Mississippi. Uh, so we have a lot to be proud of for Canton, and of course you have things like the Canton Flea Market, which everybody knows about. And, and well, there's the Canton Flea Market, and of course you know uh, 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 the Victorian Festival. That's every year. These are national uh, events that we have. Mm -hmm. Uh, Meredith uh, uh, was marching, and and King and Abernathy and Sophie Carmichael took up that march. Uh, we have had a, a lot of racial divisiveness in Canton, a lot of racial history. Uh, but this is 2021, and and our goal now is to is to talk, communicate, heal, uh, and of course move forward. And, and and so, and that's, uh, you know, as the mayor of the city of Canton, that's my motto, that's my relief, my credence, and that's exactly what we're going to do to make yeah. life better for everybody. And how will you, you, have you all begin to think about how will you handle the, the uh, flea market and festival this year? Uh, is the hopes that we'll be at a turn to where that can come back again? Or are you think well, about doing things I different? I would love for it. I, I would love for it to come back. I think that this is uh, uh, January, around about February the fifteenth, between February the fifteenth and the end of February. I predict that we'll have, as Dr. Fossey does, five hundred thousand deaths uh, here mm -hmm. in the United States. Wow. Uh, you know, the vaccine won't be our salvation. We'll have to monitor and measure. And if you come to the conclusion that I came to with the last flea market, uh, I vetoed the flea market. Of course, I was overridden by my board of aldermen mm -hmm. who thought that uh, the flea market uh, should exist. But I'm a scientist. I'm a physician. So I follow science. Mm -hmm. And so I, I'm hoping that we can have the flea market uh, this year. Uh, if, if I see that there's a surge uh, there's a high death rate, there's a prevalence, uh, then my recommendation uh, to the board as well as to the citizens of Canton that we allow this flea market to pass and take a look at the one that we will probably have in October. I think that after this summer, uh, I think that we'll be safer. We'll have more uh, shots in the arm. Uh, we will have herd immunity. And what I mean by herd immunity, I mean that that's the greatest number of people who are vaccinated uh, up against the lesser number of people who are vaccinated. So you have a greater number of folks who are vaccinated than those people who were not vaccinated also will have some element of protection as a consequence of the virus not being able to be transmitted. Well, I, what I'm hearing this week, and, 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 and there's been several feeds within Women for Progress, the organization, and women are excited. They're posting pictures that they've taken their shot. They're, they're sharing websites. I got on the website. I got my shot. So now there's a, a momentum that's going. And also, you know how we are. When we figure for other folks are getting stuff done and we can't get it, then we're going to be getting in line and saying that I want that too. And that's what it's been interesting seeing that kind of uh, – uh, a wave that's happening and it's wonderful i mean i've started sharing stories and and um i got very upset myself when a very close friend posted that she she got in line and she got hers this uh yesterday morning at 10 a.m she shared the link and said told me to go on i went on and i couldn't get on so i'm like what's going on is there a magic button i need to have or a pack a special code word so this vaccine has now become this kind of golden nugget that everybody wants to get. And I, and, and that's good. That's really, really good. And so I'm hoping that it builds an excitement. It's like a, a, a new pair of red shoes that everybody wants to get. You know? Well, I, I would say gold shoes since I'm Omega. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's but okay, fact, too. My wife and I took the vaccine in, in, uh, in December, and, of course, we're scheduled to in late December, by the way, and so we'll, we'll take the vaccine again. Uh, uh, matter of fact, this Saturday coming up, I'm excited that there's so many people, particularly African Americans, who are interested in uh, in taking this uh, vaccine. Uh, and look, when 
when I took it for me, I had no problems whatsoever. My wife had a little sore arm. Some people developed some uh, some fever, tightness, and maybe malaise, but uh, we have not had any bad uh, adverse uh, events with this vaccine. I, you know, the benefit outweighs the risk. And uh, of course, I would advise folks to, uh, you know, everyone who hears our voice this afternoon to go ahead on and take this vaccine. If you know anyone elderly over the age of 65, 75, have them to take it, particularly people between the ages of 16 and 65 who may have some comorbid condition. And by comorbid condition, those are the condition that plagues off, plagues all of us, the, the sugar, some people call it diabetes, mm-hmm. out, of, out of high blood pressure, uh, sarcoidosis, uh, ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, uh, chronic kidney disease, and all of those comorbid conditions. Uh, please try uh, to look on that list uh, at the health department and try to get on someone's list. And then let's hope and pray that the method in which uh, uh, the vaccine is distributed will eventually and appropriately reach rural America and hopefully uh, it'll get to the churches. Now, what are some of the myths that, that we are hearing out there, Dr. Chuli, that you can dispel for us tonight about the vaccine itself? Well, I think some of the, some of the myths of the, the fact that, you know, this is going to affect your entire genetic system. This is an MR, uh, MR, uh, uh, messenger RNA uh, and it does not get inside of your nucleus. Uh, and some people are saying that uh, if you take this vaccine, uh, you're going to be near death. That's, you know, that's not the case. Uh, we have seen some uh, uh, incidental findings where folks have taken the vaccine and have had some significant illness. And the, the question is whether they were going to have that anyway at that time. But I think all in all, uh, there's no reason to be afraid of the vaccine except for the fear itself. And I, look, I understand the distrust and the mistrust and the fear of the government. I understand, I understand the syphilitic uh, Tuskegee report. Uh, you know, I understand how we were used uh, experimentally during the days of slavery. And, but, you know, in, in the face of all of that, and recognizing and realizing that a physician uh, and a mayor, you know, I'm advising folks to go out and take the vaccine. Uh, it would be in their best interest. Yeah, um, I, I think we, we, we're we going to have to to put trust in each other and get this thing done. We got to we got to get to a point to where we pivot. Um, and, um, and and even from a business and economic development standpoint, um, uh, not that it's all about money, but, but the, we, we, we've got to make some movement and work together. And having conversations like this helps us uh, put out great information so that um, people can uh, make good decisions about, about, uh, about this particular vaccine. And, and, and uh, I'm gonna can, ask you, can, you, can you hear me, Ms. Wood? Yes, I, I can. Okay, my, my camera just went dark, but I have two cameras here. Okay. One, I'm watching you on Facebook, and the other one in my hand, I'm actually talking to you. So that's okay, okay hopefully. Well, we, uh, we appreciate you managing this test. You've been doing extremely well. I just got a few, just a couple more questions I want to throw out to you. I want to sure. shift a little bit uh, back to a little political stuff here. Now, um, we, we have amazing mayors all over this, uh, the state of Mississippi. And I wanted to ask you about relationships. Uh, you're very close to the city of Jackson. Um, uh, how, how impactful that what happens here in the city of Jackson impacts Canton? And is there any type of relationship building that has empowered a lot of your leadership work there? Well, uh, Mayor Lamont and I talk all the time mm. about issues that are, that are going on in Jackson, and particularly uh, uh, COVID-19, uh, we would certainly like to see that prevalence of 18,000 uh, mitigate and uh, reduce, hopefully completely eradicated by the time the vaccine is used up. Because as you know, you know, Madison County is in just a position to Hines County. And we're like 
we're like neighbors and we're always uh, crossing county lines. Mm -hmm. And so, so, so brothers and sisters in Madison County and brothers and sisters in Hines County, you know, we, we really have to be careful because we come in contact with each other one way or one form or another. So you're talking about collectively how this disease needs to be beaten. Although you got, you have 18,000 cases in Hines County, uh, that doesn't mean that those cases are trapped in Hines County or are isolated in Hines County. And uh, Hines uh, County folks travel all over the state, the same as uh, the 17,000 cases you have in DeSoto. And so we just have to, we just have to uh, uh, continue to do what we're doing to to stop the transmissibility. Uh, Mayor Lumumba has been uh, uh, very helpful as it relates to sharing information, uh, as it relates to the CARES Act, and 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 of course the, the amount of funds that we receive as a consequence of the CARES Act. But I tell you what really needs to happen. We really need to have a town hall meeting, uh, and hopefully you and others can host it. But we can have a conversation with the African American mayors uh, uh, throughout the state of Mississippi. Uh, there's a lot of information to be shared by those of us uh, who are physicians and who are who are experts in in, in vaccines and and experts in the administration of, of this medication. We just need to talk to uh, our African-American communities and get an assessment as to what they're doing and how they're doing. Because I'm just not concerned about Canton and Madison County. Uh, I'm concerned about the state of Mississippi, but I'm also concerned dearly about rural Mississippi. Mm -hmm. And, and, and Dr. Truly, you know, they've been saying a lot of the reason that, that African Americans have suffered mo uh, on a larger scale around COVID is because we've had, we've had these challenges around health care for a very long period of time. Not only access to good health care, but also from a health standpoint of the issues that, you know, regarding diabetes and blood pressure, et cetera. As we move forward uh, through COVID and past COVID, uh, what can you share with us from an African-American community, uh, from a health standpoint, what are, we, what, are the, what are the challenges there? What do we need to be doing for our own health so that we can make sure that we, our communities of color are even healthier for the next pandemic that might come along? Well, you know, one of the problems that we have in the state of Mississippi, of course, we don't have Medicaid expansion. And which means if you don't have Medicaid expansion, you can't see a provision and you can't see a provider. And thus, if you know you don't have the money, you're going to stay home. So too many of us are staying home. Too many of us are having to stay home. Uh, the point of the matter is that, uh, you know, a lot of patients, including us, uh, we wait until the last minute, uh, of course, uh, you know, to see the provider, to see the physician, I think there has to be a, a recognition and a realization that all we have in life is our health. Mm -hmm. Now, some of us have uh, $500,000 homes and some have two or three Mercedes, but at the end of the day, uh, what becomes most important in our lives is our health. And so we have to make sure that our blood pressure is under control, our diabetes is under control, uh, that we don't have any health problems at all. We need to have that conversation. And we've got to have that conversation because a lot of us take care of everything and everyone uh, except ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I think that when we start becoming a little bit more aware of our own mortality, uh, as opposed to our immortality, then that is certainly going to be an educational tool uh, that is going to gear us down the bridge and across the bridge uh, for recognizing and realizing that, you know, $100,000 is important, but if you don't have good health, you really can't use it wisely, and there's not going to be much of a benefit for you. And, you know, I'm in transportation, and I deal with, I, I deal with a lot of African-American males 
who are in the transportation industries and truck drivers. And it, it is just amazing the number of people, when I send them for their DOT physicals, which they have to have before I can put them to work or even put them in our truck driver training program, a lot of them are faced with issues. They can't pass a, just a short DOT physical because they have high blood pressure, they're overweight, or either they're diabetic. And I find a lot of the African American males are not even aware that they have these issues uh, because they have not been to doctor in a very long period of time until they show up to their DOT physical. Uh, but you, she's not lost. Mm -hmm. How did I lose her? And, and, um, I'll give you a minute, Dr. Truly, to come back on. And while we're waiting again, I want to remind you all about the March 4th uh, City of Jackson mayoral forum and all the municipal elections that are coming up. Uh, make sure you stay tuned uh, for that. And at the Secretary of State website, also it's time for you, still time for you to register to vote for these elections. Um, make sure that you're getting connected. If you want to register, you can go to Secretary of State's website, pull down your registration forms there, contact Women for Progress if you need to at mail at womenforprogress.net, mail at womenforprogress.net, or you can call us at 601-259-6770 and we will get you connected. I want to give you a couple of great websites around voter registration and voter information which is the League of Women Voters uh, website, Vote411, vote411.org. And uh, uh, there's great information. There'll be information on the various candidates that are running for the various offices. And the League of Women Voters would also be hosting a forum for the mayoral uh, debate and forum for the uh, city of Clinton, Mississippi. And we're working on several others also. So make sure you can t stay tuned to Women for Progress. If you want to be part of our database, uh, please go to our website at womenforprogress.net and you can connect with us, put your name, your telephone number, and your email address and be part of our database and stay tuned about the amazing things that are happening with Women for Progress. This Sunday, January 31, this Sunday, January 31 at 5 p.m. in the evening, Women for Progress Business Network, Women's Business Network, will be hosting a conversation around uh, exp helping expand the capacities for women-owned businesses. Uh, we'll be sharing resources and information on entrepreneurs that are looking to get in business. Um, and we're just going to be uh, talking about a lot of opportunities to empower women in general. So you don't have to be a member to get on to that particular um uh, uh, conversation that's uh, uh, Sunday at 5 p.m. and um, and so you can join us uh, if you want to get the link for that email us at mail at womenforprogress.net mail at womenforprogress.net or text us at 601-259-6770 with your email and we'll send you that link or we'll send it to your your phone so you can text us at 601-259-6770. Women for Progress, the organization, is going to be doing some amazing things around empowerment of women. So we want you to be part of it. We want you to get access to it. So please join us. We have a lot of events that are scheduled virtually over the next year. And so we want you to take advantage of that and get engaged in that process for us. Um, so stay tuned. If you are a woman and you're interested in joining this organization, we are a community service or a community improvement organization. We're not a social club. We're not a sorority. We use our time and our talents and our resources, not only to empower each other, but to empower our community and empower our state, um, and change the quality of life for all citizens of the state of Mississippi, specifically families and communities. So we love to connect hands with you and be part of that particular effort. I want to shout out to one of our members, by the way, we had a weekly spotlight, uh, Miss Sabrina Wright, who's the new director of the Greater Jackson Arts Council. 
the Greater Jackson Arts Council. And Miss Wright is um, has so much talent and so much leadership skills. We're so looking forward to the leadership that she's going to bring there. And Miss Janet Scott, who's retiring from that position, is going to be staying on for the next quarter to help with that particular transition. Okay, I thought we got a little lost there. So uh, we want to give Miss Sabrina Wright um, a pat on the back for all of her work. Um, uh, we're having some technical difficulties. I don't know what's going on here. Uh, like a lot of things going on here. Let's see if I can get stable again. We have a few minutes left. We had about five minutes left in the program. So, uh, Dr. Truly, if you're listening, I understand. Thank you so much, Dr. Uh, I mean, Ma Dr. Truly, the mayor of the city of Kenton, for sharing this hour with us tonight. He was amazing. We got so much information, and he informed us in such a big way. Thank you, Dr. Truly, for always saying yes when Women for Progress reaches out to you. We appreciate you so much. Uh, for being part of our conversation tonight. And, uh, and thank you so much for, for uh, all of the great information you shared uh, for us tonight. I, I'm also having a little difficulty too, staying a little live. So um, I just wanna, I wanna take this before I cut us off. I just want to say um, uh, again, this has been the Women for Progress radio show. And our guests tonight have been the incredible uh, mayor of the city of Jackson, Dr. William Truly. And I also want to just shout out one more time, the New Hope Baptist Church. Uh, back in the day program, Ms. Uh, Dr. Flunzy Brown Wright shared with us tonight. Uh, so this event is Thursday, February 11th. It's two nights. Um, Thursday, I'm having that difficulty again. I think I'm going to have to wrap up. Uh, but we'll continue to share that back in the day program, which has two nights, February 11th and also February 25th. Um, and we'll continue to share that information. You've been tuned in to the Women for Progress radio show. And uh, we apologize for any technical difficulties that we have. But we thank you so much for being part of this program. We want you to have a fabulous weekend. And look, we look forward to talking to you again next week. Thank you so much.